So, um, I come up with some comments that were left for one reader, viewer, who had gone actually back and forth, I'm so grateful, between two of my channels on two different videos, and um, the questions that he asked were just really some ones I wanted to answer, and I had no way to type as much <laughs> as I would really want them to, and he was kind enough to say, yeah, go ahead and make a video. So I plucked them all, and I have to go to this other section where they're much more cuter. Um, I'm going to try to answer a lot of these kind of in a general way at first, just because um, I tend to talk too much, and also because there are about two different videos, so uh, some of the answers might apply to one in a different way than the other, and so if I don't touch on what you wanted, or if you were meaning something else to say something more, I'll correct it. Okay. So I think that this first one was made on No Longer Baha'i. Um, and she says, that's so weird to me. I'm not chastised in a loving way. But I am just curious, because I know I could never accept that for myself. So these would be the questions I would ask myself. Okay. How do you reject Muhammad as a legitimate messenger of God? When you read the history of the Orthodox Church, how can you believe any of its doctrines are other than man-made? The Orthodox Church has been around for two millennia, but the world's problem is only peaked in the last. Well, really, reaching a crisis point, so what hope but for true happiness only comes through virtue? No matter what label you place upon it, if you couldn't get through a revelation, try Aristotle, um, what's going Maxian Ethics, granted a even a good English translation might still raise that Greek to you to use the pun. You can say my beliefs are your beliefs, but there is only one truth, because there is only one reality. Without knowing how to, or having trained yourself at least to some extent in moral virtue, you will have no ability to recognize it. Um, then the third one, okay. That sounded really condescending, and I didn't quite mean it that way. It's just that in a world um, that is set by default materialism, it's not common practice. People confuse virtue with the comfort of possessing things, or rather the comfort of feeling like they could possess things. Never mind that everything is constantly mixed up, and even under the best circumstances, this earthly life is gone, as the boy said, like something written in water with a stick. Okay, so, um, first, I wanted to touch on because it just tickled me and you said I'm just curious because I know I could never accept that for myself and that's what I thought too um, in two directions one I thought I would never read the Vatican and two I would never ever if any religion at all or faith in my mind would be one that I would practice after the faith which wouldn't have even been an option in my mind it would have never been, that would, this one would have been last on the list. Christianity, absolutely not. That was so far away from anything I could ever even consider for myself. But yeah, I, I, you could think that too. I could never do that. Here I am. For, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are the questions that you would have asked. How do I, how do, how do I reject Muhammad as a legitimate messenger of God? Um, I've mirrored two or three videos from Yusuf. Um, mo I think they're all three of them um, are from his old channel, and there's even one that I did. So however many they are, and whichever channels they're from, I don't recall, whatever, I'll link them in the bar because he just does a super job of explaining them um, better than ever I could. Okay. When I read the history of the, ch of the church, sorry, I really haven't yet. Um, I don't have a book to refer to yet, but I know I was reliable about that, so um, I know I I know very, very, very seldom what I, I mean, like, just not even a smattering. I couldn't even say I know a smattering. I couldn't even say I know a drop, so um, I don't. Then the other part of it was, how could I believe any of its doctrines are other than man-made? Well, it's funny that you said that, because doctrine, I mean, that's like that's like the definition of what it is. So um, it's just a teaching or instruction. Yeah, da 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 da. Um, and I think it's pretty clearly understood that which is considered to be a tradition. 
or something that is done out of honor that was, um, I don't want to say the word habit, but a common understanding and that which was, um, you know, directly taught by Christ. So since those are pretty, you know, clear in my mind, like for instance, you know, um, if I'm if I'm saying a prayer or something, I can, you know, I can cross myself if I want to, but if I don't feel like doing that, then I wouldn't. And then it's not like there's anything that says that, oh, if I have to do that when I'm doing it or something. I mean, um, not that I know of anyway. <laughs> um, but you know, all that is kind of as you collect it, I suppose. I mean, from your devotion or dedication. I'm really not sure because I'm really not orthodox like that. Um, so I'll be done. The church has been around for 2,000 years, blah, blah, blah. but the world's problems only keep getting worse. Well, sure. Um, <laughs> but that has actually nothing to do with the church. I don't think the church is supposed to prevent problems um, from happening in the world. It, maybe that's not what you meant, but I'll just answer it that way. True happiness only comes through virtue. Actually, that's what made me sick and sad. So the devil's a messy, I'm sorry. Um, no matter what way they twist it, honey. Uh, yeah, actually, it did matter because healing works and putting virtues on from the outside didn't help. Um, if I couldn't get through Revelation, nope, I never have. I've never read the whole Bible either as an orthodox. Um, could I get through Aristotle? Probably not. And I don't even remember reading that in my philosophy class that I had in college. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I really don't remember. I think, what do I remember? Um, I don't rem it's been that long. I, what was it? 90, 90. It was 1990 when I took philosophy in college. So, nope, don't remember. Um, would I be interested in reading again, though? <laughs> Probably not. Um, unless there was something I was reading it specifically for. That might be. Da -da 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 -da. Without knowing it, how to have trained yourself. No, I have a totally untrained mind, as you can tell. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't mean that I haven't read. It's just that at this point, <laughs> I'm a little shy to do that. A little gun shy. Let's put it that way. Um, of course I can recognize moral virtues. And I don't have to be taught how to do that. But I think those are more related to my conscience. Now, there are two people who talk about virtue and moral and stuff and morality. Uh, Gambler and Yusuf both do. Go, hop on their channels. And maybe they'll, they'll, they'll have things that you'll be interested to hear about for them. Okay, and then he says, you know, that sounded really condescending and I didn't quite mean it, but well, that's okay, don't worry, I don't know if I did. It's just that the world is set t by default to materialism and it's, and it's not common practice, I guess you mean, to do the other two quickly as individual. People confuse virtue with the comfort of possessing things. Actually, I did a video about that. Um, they might have taken it down. It was about how I wished I lived in a culture that as much as somebody would say, ooh, I can't wait to go get that handbag, that they'd say, you know what, I'm working on, and they'd say whatever the virtue was. So I think that would, um, I don't know. I can't remember if I could that video up or not. Da -da 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 -da. Even under the best circumstance, earthly life is gone as what it. It's funny that you said that, though, because you know what the first thing I thought of? And I probably can't even quote it, even though I used to be able to before. Um, from the Kabiakta when it says, um, you know, don't revel in the things that you have. That's not the exact quote. Um, today they are yours, tomorrow they will be someone else's. I remember that quote. It's been so long, but I still remember that. Um, yeah, well, it says that in Bible stuff too, so that's all over the place. Uh, the hardest part for me was feeling about other members. I think this is part after you've, you've gotten into the depolarization of um, other members is how little value each of them place on what their faith makes very clear is of premium value. Science, relig reason, and education. Reason I never saw um, ever being described. Science and education, yeah. Um, you know, as far as what? Um, excellence.
balance in all things, and then science as far as being in agreement, you know, not having to be in discordance with faith. But you know what? I'm surprised you left out art um, and work, because work is worship too. Despite this, is full of very flaky people, mainly only in America though, um, because a lot of people mistake, um, you know, the faith for some kind of like very new agey thing. Um, and I think I was even accused of that on my other video. Somebody was saying something about that. Um, from the rock Buddhists to the homeopaths to the people who believe cancer comes solely from living out of harmony with nature. Um, you know, I sort of resemble that remark. <laughs> um, massage therapist to a uh, yoga instructor. But don't worry, I'm not totally wrong. <laughs> but, of course, this has no bearing on reality of the revelation itself. A lot of people think it does, um, and they live it that way, and I really, I, I just see a very different way in which people who particularly are a Persian and raised, you know, I mean, especially when they've had, they've been really badly persecuted or their families are, oh my goodness, you know, like the father who does not declare gets all of his family over to the states, and then you know he declares as soon as you know his family is saved. Um, you know they have to go through a lot, and you know here we are with our Ruby, which I'm not even sure. Well, and maybe it's not even me anymore because I've always hated Ruby, and I don't practice it or study it or know any of it, so I don't know why I could hate Ruby. So there you go, have it. Um, do 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 do. Act that way in spite of it. I don't know. I think I've seen it. I've seen a couple different things, especially in the youth. Some of the youth I've seen do, and others um, are very, very dedicated. Some of them have taken kind of a break from the faith, and then they go, go back and they're stronger. And I've even seen people take like 25 year breaks from the faith, um, and then they go back to it. And they'll say things like, well, I never found anything better, or things like that. You know, Christianity at this stage in of its development was full of violent, murderous confrontation between different communities of believers. My point being that no one really knows what it means to be a Baha'i yet. Um, the community uh, full of people is just trying to figure that out. But society as a whole has also made tremendous progress from where it was 160 years into Christianity and exactly because of the same faith core that brought this revelation. Okay, I totally disagree. Um, the first part, okay, I'll tell you a silly story. The first one where you talk about that, I would say I had a friend um, uh, who, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a super punk and he used to make his own t-shirts back when there was no Calipay Press, and he took a white Hanes t-shirt, and in marker, he wrote on it as if it was just like a score tally board and a sports logo, you know? He said, uh, he put lions on the top, and then Christians on the bottom, and it's, you know, three to zero. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think three, <laughs> I think Gilbert and Yusuf and um, David Weemuthan would all have things to say to you about what you said there. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave that one alone because I'm not the history buff. My point being that nobody really knows what it means to be a Baha'i yet. Um, come on, but that's supposed to be very simple. Bestow all humanity? Uh, I, I think maybe what you're trying to say is not yet knowing how to. Is that what you mean? Maybe? Um, and the community is still trying to figure that out. Yeah. And I think that's incredibly difficult because of the LSA thing, and that's all I'll say about that. But society also has made tremendous progress from where it was. Now, this is where I'm going to harken back to what you said about um, comfort. Because, sure, we have made all kinds of uh, inventive strides, but... Um, in some ways, do you think that we've improved on uh, human rights? Um, I'd say maybe, but I think that it just looks in a different direction and may not necessarily be so because 
of where the focus is being concentrated. So I'll stop with that here. The auxiliary language was only a suggestion to help facilitate the lecture group. Well, Cavallero, <laughs> my friend Cavallero, who like totally loves Esperanto, and if you if you know about that, then you understand what was you know headed towards with that. Also, a hot set. Yeah, it's not enjoying like a law is enjoying, but it's I think um, yeah. And oh, this is cute. Although one can't help thinking that Farsi and Arabic will always be spoken. Maybe people thought that about Latin, you know. I'm surprised that in the nearly two decades that you were in the community, you never bothered to learn Farsi, at least if for no other reason than to read the writing. Well, but what's the UHG for? And um, what about everything that Shohi wrote? I mean, isn't that why I didn't have to learn Farsi, except for, you know, what I wanted to chat about with my friends? So, no. Um, and I think that probably, even if I had attempted, maybe after 10 years of true, you know, diligent study, I would have the reason to understand the nuances. But really, that's what I relied on UHG for, so I'm not really sure. So, um, let's see, that's the da, 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 da. Sound of parentheses. Okay. I haven't really already considered in sound of fallacies. The fallacies of syncopy. How would it even work? I mean, it, we get past the proof for God. Or, um, okay. Then the transitional explanation for the universe is infinitely more probable than an irrational one. I like that idea. So I'll put that away. Then, and now here's where you make a loop that I totally don't agree with, but you say, then either all the religions have to be true, I don't think that means that, or none of them can reasonably be believed to be so. Well, I don't think that faith is reasonable necessarily. Um, I think faith comes by a couple of different routes that I'm aware of, but I'm sure that there are as many routes as there are souls who reach themselves towards God. So I think that there are lots of different ways that people get there, and they combine them with so many other different things that uh, I couldn't really say. All right, so that's the first start. I hope that um, I'm getting anywhere towards what you're uh, thinking about. If if I've misunderstood you or I didn't go in the direction that you were looking towards, or feel free to you know show me all the holes in my I don't really use project AI. Um, or <laughs> whatever you're wanting me to, to peek towards. And um, I don't mind if you give me homework assignments or tell me to be gifted. I might. I might. We'll see if I can get away. And um, thank you very much for your questions. And I look forward to hearing back with you.